now for the shop report with What up, sports fans? Welcome to the Shop Report. I'm Barbershop J. I'll be your host for the day. Here's what's happening. For all my basketball junkies out there, March Madness is fire. I mean, my gosh, talk about parody and upsets, right? But that's not what we're here for today. March Madness, no. no, 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 no. You know what we're here for. The NBA playoffs are set to begin less than a month from now. April 14th is going down, son. But guess what? Before we even get to that, because I will be doing a show. Yes, I will be. Like a playoff preview, right? But before we even get to all of that, I thought I'd take some time out of the day to share with all of you all who are fans of whatever team, whatever player, yada, yada, yada. Just to give you some idea and an understanding going in on your team's chances of winning. And when I say winning, I mean win and advance. Not like the NCAA survive and advance. I mean win and advance. See, the regular season in the NBA is misleading. And people who are fans of, they misconstrue. They see this and they say, oh, wow, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. I mean, yeah, you know, it's not, and it's not even so much that it's opinion. It's really based on what they've seen. They really make what they think are legitimate projections. Well, I'm here to tell you that what you see is not what you saw and instead what should be seen. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't think so. So here we go. Now, this is not a four-point play, okay? But I sat down and I put together a few points because I like to use the word or the term in some cases, many people say, criteria or criterion, ingredients on what it takes to win in a round-robin format, regardless of how that format is constructed. Well, again, whether it's the NCAA, whether it's high school playoffs, whether it's FCS, FBA, NBA, NBA, Today, B.A., it don't matter. The formula for success is what it is and will always be. Now, you might have some of the moments where, you know, you win a game or two or three or whatever. But you can't, you know, by doing it this way in this sexy way, but you can't do it consistently. That's what this is, to, this is about today. Can you do it consistently? What are the ingredients necessary for you to be consistent in what you're doing? Case in point, last night's contest between the Boston Celtics and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And then we saw it with Michigan in the NCAA tournament. And Houston, the Cougars. Two instances. And I'm, and I'm bringing up these two instances because, one, you of course, you got college and you got then, you know, the NBA. I'm bringing up these instances because I am a stickler for free throws and free throw percentage. Now, you listen to today's national pundits or national fans, and they try to dismiss or are dismissive when it comes to mentioning of stats and a player's worth and so on and so forth, and they leave out the free throw percentage as if those free throws and the free throw percentage is is irrelevant or it don't matter because everybody's shooting a three ball. And again, let me let me reiterate. I do not have a problem with the three-point shot. I don't. It's the usage or how it's utilized. It's a crutch nowadays. And most people look at it as the end all be all. So, in the NCAA tournament here, Houston and Michigan, Devin, I forget the guy's last name for Houston, missed two free throws. Two free throws that would have put the Cougars up by four. So that even if Michigan had come down and what now, of course, because of their two free throw misses, turns out to be turns out to have been the game winning three. Even if that three takes place, if those three, excuse me, those two free throws are hit or made, that three 
Steele does not win the game. See, people look at the three and say, oh, they won the game, oh, Michigan, oh. But no, I'm looking at the entirety of, not just prisoner of the moment. Got to get away from that prisoner of the moment. Moment. Then you look at OKC in Boston. Carmelo Anthony misses two free throws with eight seconds left to go in the game. And what happens? Markeith, Marcus, I don't know, still can't tell the difference between who's who for Boston, comes down and hits a three. Now, what was impressive about that three is that even though the time was winding down to end the game, if you would, he had the presence of mind to not rush that shot like you see so many players doing. And he had three defenders around him. He had a, the presence of mind to take one ball, one dribble halfway to his right, then pull up. I mean, kudos to him. But that three does not win the game for Boston if Melo hit them two free throws. You get my drift? So stop acting as if those free throws don't matter. They do matter. Now, with all that being said, let's get back to the criterion, okay? So, some of the criteria necessary for having success throughout a playoff and a favorable outcome for your team or whoever you have a rooting interest in or for, let me say this. Defense first. Focus on getting stops first. And then the offense will, that, that's created off that defense will be like poetry in motion. Getting stops not only keeps you engaged throughout a game, but guess what? You can have a bad offensive night. But if you maintain your defenses, defensive principles, you can still win. But not the other way around. Number two, count every trip. Every possession matters. Whether it's the first or the fourth, take care of the ball. I cannot tell you how many times I've watched professionals now. This is what I don't get when people who watch the game, they see the same thing I see and say, like, no, he, he didn't do that. That wasn't a foul or that wasn't a this or that wasn't. I'm like, what, man, what are you watching? You trying to tell me that that pile of dog poo-poo on the ground is not dog poo-poo because it's powdered sugar on it? That's not it. I don't make it a funnel cake. And you know why? Because it's flies still flying around it. Every possession matters if you're trying to win. Shot selection versus shot attempts. Now, this is crucial. Very, very crucial. How many times have you watched a game? And it's not just the NBA, but I say the NBA because they're the one, that's the, the league, the NBA is out front of all this hoop, right? How many times have you watched a game and you've seen a team be in the bonus and steadily take shots 50 feet away from the basket because their talent says that they can, so therefore they do. Well, guess what? Just because you can don't mean you should. And you know why? Based on the situation. If a guy goes five for seven from three in a game, and then on the flip side, another guy goes 17 for 38, you know what the conversation going to be about? The guy who went 17 for 38. Man, he, went, he, he, he hit 40. Yeah, but guess what? I'm not as impressed with your 40 if it took you 90 to get them. Y'all heard me say this before? Yeah. And I'm going to keep on saying it. You cannot tell me. If it's all about percentages, I don't care what era you in. Being closer to the basket is always going to give you a better chance despite it being a layup from 50 feet away for these guys. Now they're so talented. But again, talent does not equal skill. Get that through your thick skill. It does not equal skill. Again, it's not the volume of shots that wins games. It's the type of shots based, again, on the situation. And then four, fundamental or fancy? Look, I know, as one of the league's favorite, most favorite coveted said, I know chicks dig the long ball. 
and that would be the three again in this case. But playing inside out is critical to the success of not only your offense and the outcome of the game, but your half-court offense in particular. Remember now, long threes lead to long rebounds, which leads to easy runouts for the other team. Look, you can be a live and die by the three-point uh, offensive rebounding team, you know, if you want to. But you're going to find yourself more often than not in an insurmountable deficit real quick. But, you know, to drive home this point, because ultimately what I'm saying is I'm talking about nuances. See, people want to look at stats. And let, let me let me say this about stats right quick, too. There are lies then there are damn lies, and then there are statistics. But in layman's terms, people are trying to make an argument, and an argument being singular, an argument based on numbers. But I, what, what I don't understand is, and I don't think people really give it as much thought as it needs to be given, but how can you base an argument on, a, on, a, on numbers when numbers are both universal and arbitrary? That's like saying you can be on both sides of the street at the same time. No, you cannot. You can't do it. So just to drive home this point or just to, to, to add a little more depth to what it is I'm saying, when I talk about nuances, those things that cannot be measured in any game in, on any given moment, the fundamentals will always rise to the top over the fancy in my estimation. Now, I don't have any video right now behind me because, of course, we're doing a, a, this is audio to back that up. But I'm trying to tell you, excuse me, there is evidence. See, when you watch these NBA games, when you watch basketball games, period, I, I suggest two things. One, don't watch the ball. Watch the game. And two, turn the volume completely down so that you're not distracted on what it is that you're seeing. I told my son, I said, just watch one quarter of any NBA game without the volume. Oh, he, you could, oh my gosh, I wish y'all could have seen him. He couldn't sit still, can't do it. See what I'm saying? So, let me read to you. I'm reading this book. And the title of this book, and it's a great book, by the way. I'm not done with it, but I've got through, I've gotten through the majority of it, at least enough of it to um, help to illustrate or accentuate, excuse me, the point I'm trying to make about how important nuances is, nuances are. It's called the Boys of Dunbar, and what it does is chronicle. It's, this is a chronicle. It chronicles rather the story of the 1981-1982 uh, Dunbar basketball team. The boy. Um, uh, what? What's? The, oh my gosh! Oh, give me a second here. Let me. Let me. I want to. I want to make sure I get this right. The Boys of Dunbar. Oh, they were called the Dunbar the Dunbar Poets. Okay, the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School basketball team, and that team had on it Muggsy Bogues, Gary Graham, David Wingate, Reggie Williams, Tim Dawson, Reggie Truck Lewis. Now, most of you all will know these guys because, of course, they played in the NBA and they played at a time where everybody keeps, you know, not these dudes nowadays who didn't see the, see the, if you didn't get a chance to witness these guys play. And all you got is YouTube clips. You're not going to get the full scope and understanding of why that there really is no comparison between then and now. Okay, so let me remind you now we're talking about the nuances and the quality and the style of a play that is so crucial. All right. So let me read to you just a few excerpts that I've gotten through so far when it comes to this book. And I got to tell you. Man, oh, man, oh, man. It's a good read. Any of you all that are readers out there, you want to read this. Now, the coach for this Dunbar team, his name was, he was a former uh, NFL player. Bob Wade played for the Baltimore Colts. What year, I don't know. But Robert P. Wade is his full name. But he was the head coach for this 81-82 uh, uh, Dunbar squad. That was arguably one of the best in the country, and it still go down, goes down as one of the best in the country you know, even to this day. But let me read to you just a few things that I've highlighted in this book that I thought that I think that are, are crucial and very important when it comes again to nuances and winning. 
Wade emphasized the game's details, the subtle nuances that many high school kids never learn to master. His practices were filled with hours upon hours of drills that fostered a mastery of things like defensive footwork, swift defensive rotations designed to keep players between the opposing man and the basket, how to take charges, how to set screens, the proper angles to take when rolling off the screen and cutting to the basket, how to box out for rebounds, and how to throw outlet passes among a plethora, look it up, of other details that could be the difference between a win or a loss in a close game. Okay? Wade ran the same drills over and over again, programming his, excuse me, programming (laughs) his players to react quickly and correctly to various game situations. The casual fans who packed Dunbar's gym and didn't have an advanced understanding of the game undoubtedly enjoyed the frenetic pace that the poets played at. The alley-oops, the slam dunks sounds like many NBA fans or today BA fans. And the way they ran the ball down an opponent's throat. They might have assumed that his players were just great athletes. Let me say that again. They might have assumed that his players were just great athletes and that all Wade had to do was roll the ball out and let them run up and down the court. But sophisticated students, yeah, but sophisticated students or purists of the game could see the discipline how fundamentally sound and and unselfish his Dunbar teams were, how they coalesced as a unit, always seeming to make the right plays, instantaneously adjusting. Now, let me go back a bit here. And just go over when it said, when it talked about his practices, how they were filled with hours upon hours of drills, that fostered a mastery of things like defensive footwork, swift defensive rotations, designed to keep players between the opposing man and the basket. Now, I'm asking every last one of y'all out there, when you watch an NBA game, tell me, where do you, why is this, what I just read, why is that irrelevant in today's game? Who do you see doing that? This is why, well, I used to say, Kawhi Leonard was my favorite player. He individually does what I just read to you. But then you want to say how sweet a guy he is because he dropped 40? Drop 40 when you got somebody or players or a player or players on a team who understand how to stay between the offensive player and the basket. But I digress. Okay? Holler at me when you see this. When you see that, then come holler at me. Then come debate me. Because you're not going to tell me that that, what I just read, has no place in the Today BA. That's what's wrong with the game. That's what we're here for today. That's what's wrong with it. See what I'm saying? If your team is not doing that, what I just read, then I'm telling you right now. They might win a game or two because last year's NBA playoffs, was the way it was played, was atrocious. Horrendous. Horrendous. That's terrible and horrendous to get combined. Torrible. Now tell me I'm lying. You could try to make this. Oh, man, he did this. Oh, why did you see that pass? Oh, did this man miss me with all of that garbage? Yeah, I digress. Wade's other obsession was academics, but I'm not going to go into that. You know what I mean? Because that's really, I don't want to say necessarily self-explanatory, but what's already understood need not be explained. Now, As I said to you, at the end of the day, your team, if not rehearsed in the fundamentals, because, see, you can tell the difference between a player or team that has skill versus the other way around based on the situation. First quarter, time on the clock, how many fouls, you get what I'm saying? Those things combined, or fourth quarter, are you in the bonus? Time on the clock. 
What's the score? These are called those things. Those that's what comprises a situation, and what you do in those situations more often than not will determine the outcome, and whether or not if you win and advance. Let me read on. Before anyone could practice, he was required to complete every homework assignment due the next day. Now you all like, what that got to do with the NBA? What I'm saying is he's he established a standard. See, that's what's missing nowadays. The standards are, if at all. Bass Ackward. Only after the homework was reviewed by one of the teachers who volunteered as tutors could play could players go to the gym. Practice began when the last textbook was closed. See, when I look at this NBA, I trace it all the way back to its grassroots, the AAU, and what it has become. Torrendous. Standards. There are certain expectations that are placed on you as a player who wears the Dunbar uniform, Wade said, launching into his standard speech before commencing the inaugural practice of each season. You should have been working out on your own. And if you haven't, we'll soon find out. It's not going to be easy. Because of who we are, there is a target that will always be on your back. In order to deal with that day in and day out, we will go that extra mile. Now, how many NBA players go an extra mile? Huh? No one will be more prepared and in better condition than we will. No one has invented a pill that you can swallow to get you in the kind of shape that you need to be in. It starts right here. Now, let me give you some idea of what his players were like, because, excuse me, what his practices were like. Because I often, too often hear people say when they're talking about a player that they like, Man, he worked on his game. He worked on his game. Why? Because he's better at three points or shooting the three? whoop de f- You know what? I'm not going to. I digress. Wade blew his whistle, and the players strapped on the sandfield backpacks that sat at their feet. They then scooped up two bricks, one for each hand, and a seemingly endless number of full-court sprints followed. Then to half court and back followed by suicide runs. Sprints to the nearest free throw line and back to the baseline, followed immediately by a sprint to the half court line and back to the baseline, with an ensuing sprint to the free throw line at the other end of the court and back to the baseline, concluded by a full court dash to the far baseline and back. Man, that's a high school practice? You got professionals that don't do that. But then want to talk about, he the goat, he the goat. Yeah, he a goat, all right, chewing on his curd. Huh? Because that's what goat, them the kind of practices. When you tell me a guy working on his game, tell me, show me the one who doing that. See, and again, I'll go back to Kawhi Leonard. Now, I'm not happy with the fact, I don't know what's going on with him right now in the Spurs and whether he feels, I don't know. I can't, you know, I don't, I don't know. But I'm not happy about it. If it's on him, I ain't happy about it because it don't matter. Even though you're my favorite player. But I'm saying at the same time, talking about this right here on this subject today, he's the one player who exudes or exemplifies what I just read to you. If you look at his career, go back to San Diego State and look at him all the way up until they won, the Spurs won the finals with him. You will see that this, this somewhere along the line he implemented this philosophy. Look it up. You understand? This is what I'm talking about. Let me read farther. Now, I, I know, I get it. You know, folks ain't, uh, folks ain't too, you know, they ain't too much into this or too much ready for this. Uh, but now, in particular, I'm, go- I'm going to talk about Muggsy Bogues because Muggsy was the catalyst for that Dunbar team. And nothing says that more than what he was before he got to the team. As a middle school wrestling champion, that I didn't know, and ping pong savant, these are two of the things that sharpened his defensive skills on the hardwood. He enjoyed, now listen carefully now, crowding his opponent from the moment he received an inbounds pass hounding and muscling him as he attempted to dribble down court. Well, I digress. Because all of y'all who claim to be savants, basketball that is, should know the rest. 
But in case you don't, I'm going to give you my best. You cannot tell me that, as I said to my son, and I've said to you all before that I've said to my son, when asked, Dad, you think such and such and such and such is sweet? I said, man, listen, I really can't tell you how good today's offensive players are because the defense is atrocious in how it's played. And he'll say, but it's no hand checking like most grown juveniles. And I say, what that got to do with crowding a guy? Because you, you know what? You can take out hand checking. That's fine. But just because hand checking is taken out does not mean that you can't play solid defense on a play on an offensive player. Because defense is played first by what? Moving your feet. Now, again, I don't know what y'all want to see or this, this thing y'all based all off of fantasy. But again, miss me. Because I'm going to tell y'all what I see. Whether, I'm a, whether that team or players are favored of mine, I'm going to tell the truth about it. And when I watch the NBA games, I watch it from all angles, as many as I can. And I'm saying to myself, how is it that a guy like James Harden, who's in the MVP conversation, most valuable player, to, and again, most of these awards, uh, awards are not what they used to. They don't mean, they don't have the substantive that, of, of today that they used to. But a guy like James Harden, last year against the Denver Nuggets, goes from one end of the floor to the other for a game-winning layup without nobody addressing him. And then y'all want to talk about, oh, oh, he hands down. it, Man, I, listen, you can't get full credit on a basketball court and you only do and give the energy on one end of the floor. It's 94 feet. See what I'm saying? When I watch these offensive players today and I'm sitting here looking at the game, I'm telling my son, now you explain to me how it is that off the inbound, a guy get, uh, the guy with the ball goes all the way to the other free throw line. And then when he get there, the defenders most often than not, once the guy puts the ball on the floor, the defender turns and let the guy go right by. But then people who so caught up in the, in the fantasy, they be like, ooh, did you see that? Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah is right. Ouch. And I'm saying to myself, man, listen, these dudes nowadays for the most part, how good are you really offensively? How much credit do you think you deserve when you just were allowed to go right to the rim? See, the players I grew up watching, they had obstacles. As soon as the ball got inbounded, they had to deal with problems. They had to work the 94 feet. And if they got across half court, they had to work even harder to get a good quality shot. That's why I said shot selection versus shot attempts. What? Don't tell me that you took a hundred. I don't, I don't. I'm not impressed by that. What kind did you take? These guys nowadays, man, they jacking up shots, and people are like, oh man, did you see? He was so sweet. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh he. Yeah, he's great. Really? I could look great too, with two bad knees. Give me the ball and, and get out the way. I'll give you a dipsy do and a twirly poo too. And then hand me a trophy. Dearly beloved, happy congratulations today. I just want to thank the little people who didn't get in my way so I could put my full skills and talent on display. Once again, Miss May. You understand? All I'm saying to you is, and I'm not going to, because I got a few more pages of this book that I can discuss with you all, but I'm not, I'm just going to leave it right there for now. But I, I'm, I want you all to get some idea of what it is that you should be looking at. And if you're a gambling man out there, I want you, to, if you're going to put your money down, these are the things that you can, that you can take to the bank. Not that live and die by that three ball. Got me. It's not going to get it. It's not, that's, that's not going to get it done, son. I say no, we won't go. Yeah, I say that all the time. You have to nowadays. Because if you don't, what do you end up with? 
Yeah. Trash. Garbage. So, for all of you all who going to get get your beers and your popcorn and your chips and your dip and all of that stuff and get ready for this NBA playoffs, know this. I just want you all to pay attention. See, it's not watching it. But when you're watching it, do you know what you're looking for? Otherwise, keep hope alive. And on that note, it's been fun, but I got to run. Appreciate y'all for listening to the Shop Report. Check us out on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter. Or you can email us, theshopreport365 at gmail.com. And if that don't work, Google it. And remember, the next time y'all want to know what's really going on, man, come to the shop. Walk-ins are always welcome. Holla.